Okay. Uh, my name's Ian Wells. I work for Cisco, and along with um, some friends at AT&T and at Ericsson, uh, we've been working on a project that we call Gluon, a networking service for people who think Neutron can't be all things to all people. And so what do I mean by that? Well, Neutron's quite determined in what it delivers to you. Neutron's trying to give you a layer two network domain using networks, ports, and subnets. Um, so ports attach virtual machine um, interfaces to a network. Uh, networks forward traffic around to all of the other interfaces on the same network, and subnets provide the addressing. Some services on top, like, for instance, load balancing and routers. Uh, some external connectivity um, through the routers and via provider networks. But it doesn't solve everybody's problems, and the reason is it's quite opinionated about what it does. Um, so, um, subnets, to talk about those la layer two domains, I mean, they're fundamentally layer two domains and they don't work any other way. Um, subnets provide addresses out of a pool, um, but subnets kind of define the addressing scope of a network. They're one address range with one gateway, so pretty much you consistently end up with a layer two domain. Um, subnet addresses are given to ports when they're created, which means that you can't address a port based on where that port happens to be within your cloud, which um, the, there's some projects within Neutron to work on solving that particular problem, but basically ports, uh, because those port addresses can be anywhere, the layer two overlay has to span the entire data center. Um, it may be wiring up two virtual machines in opposite corners of your data center. Um, neutron ports belong to neutron networks. There's no option for them not to belong to neutron networks, so every bit of forwarding that happens between virtual machines happens, to, um, happens on a layer two domain. Um, and if you want to do anything else, like, for instance, layer three rooted networks, the Calico project's one example of um, a group of people who like to do that. Um, MPLS BGP VPNs give you capabilities to bring in individual interfaces um, to uh, individual interfaces from virtual machines to a VPN, which then does layer three forwarding. Or if you're doing service chaining, something like NSH is one example, but there are others whereby the traffic is routed by uh, your choice of how services are chained together and not by the layer two domain. All of these things, they, they can can be implemented in Neutron. Some of them have been implemented in Neutron, but you really have to stretch the model beyond breaking point to actually get to that point. Um, and so why shouldn't you do it in Neutron? Well, as I say, you can do it three ways around. You can, do, you can use the Neutron object model that you have today, networks, ports, subnets, and add a little bit more. Um, and then you end up with behavior that's not what the API intended, which doesn't obviously map to what the API is describing when uh, uh, as you're trying to uh, get packets to move around. Uh, you can add a Neutron extension, and a Neutron extension generally means here when you're trying to determine how packets move around the system that, again, Neutron's not doing the behavior that the network port subnet model describes, despite the fact that you always have a port on a network and you have no choice for that. Or, thirdly, you can simply not use Neutron, and it's that third point that we're trying to explore today. Um, so, the interesting thing is, when you actually try and get Neutron and Nova to separate, it turns out that they're really quite tightly integrated together today. Lots of touch points, lots of ways in which they talk to each other. Um, but largely, a, a lot of these things you can do without. So, um, the important thing here is that you, you have ports. Ports are effectively... Uh, from Nova's side, it's where they land traffic. As from Neutron's side, rather, it's where they land traffic. And from Nova's side, it's where they pick it up and hand it on to a virtual machine. Um, it's a negotiated meeting point for the two sides of what's going on here. Um, but beyond that, then, there's a whole lot of helper functions in Nova that date back from Nova network days frequently, whereby ports can be created and deleted. Networks can also be created and deleted, and subnets can be created and deleted. Fixed IPs, floating IPs, pretty much everything that you can possibly do in Neutron the, or at least the straightforward stuff you can do in Neutron, you can do using a command from Nova, which uses the Nova API, which basically just passes it straight over. Um, what we actually want is we want to reduce that interface down to the minimal necessary and not a little bit more, so that actually it's very easy to determine what's going on um, between Nova and Neutron. And then if I choose to write something different at the back end um, that doesn't implement um, a Neutron-like API, or even if I actually choose to do something different on the front end, so instead of using Nova, I use something to tomorrow that delivers containers or a network service, um, then I can do that, and the interface they have to deliver is perfectly well-defined and very small. So what is actually required in that interface? Ports. As I say, ports are the landing point, and ports are the thing that Nova and Neutron absolutely have to agree on. Um, they're, they're that fundamental point of negotiation whereby um, Nova says, I'm using this port, and Neutron says, fine, I know what that port is expected to do. Um, 
And the only thing that Nova actually does with ports, if you cut it down to the bare necessities, is it uses binding and unbinding. Binding says, here is a port. It's a virtual entity that you know about at the back end. Um, I'm going to be using it on this machine over here. I'm going to be connecting a virtual machine to it. You drop the traffic over here. And Neutron says, that's all good. I can do that for you. Uh, everything else, as I say, is helper functions. It's convenient, but it's absolutely not necessary to get uh, networking to work between Nova and Neutron. Um, and so we came up with Gluon. Um, Gluon is literally glue. Um, it glues Nova to Neutron, and, but it will glue other things into Nova if you want to instead. So the idea is that it's a negotiating point where you can determine Neutron, Nova says, I'm going to use this port. Gluon says, I know who owns that port. I will go and refer your um, your needs to that back end over there. And that means that I can use different network APIs to describe different networking concepts. And it's important to note that that's not a controller, that's actually just an API. I'm trying to describe what I want to do with the network. And so I need an API that tells me, uh, for instance, that I'm forwarding traffic through a service chain or you know, using a layer three rooted network. Um, it's not any problem with Neutron's implementation of network control, nothing to do with that whatsoever. It's just to do with the fact that when I'm an application programmer, I can't program to a Neutron API if I don't know what that Neutron API does. And if the back end is kind of defeating Neutron's checks and balances to give me L2 networks, then it becomes very difficult for me to work out what's going on and what any given Neutron back end guarantees for me. Um, so we experimented. We simplified the interface a little. It turns out that if you actually look into the Nova code, there's actually a plug-in there already for networking. It used to allow you to choose between Nova and Network and Neutron. And it's got it, it's one big file with a whole bunch of functions you can call, create port, create network, bind and unbind, and all the rest of them. Um, so we took that, um, and we copied it, and then we trimmed out all the cruft from it. And we end up with a Gluon interface that calls, instead of to, Nova, uh, to Neutron, it calls out to Gluon to try to do binding and unbinding. The rest of it's unimplemented. Seems to work. Um, and then you end up with losing all of the help. You get the bind and unbind to work. And all you have to do is implement that little bit. And we've done some testing on this. It does work. Um, it gives you a whole bunch of interesting additional problems. But it's a place for us to start. And that's what we're trying. Um, and then we're not throwing Neutron away. We're keeping Neutron as one of the alternatives that we might use in the back end. So the idea is that Neutron is very good at doing what it does. It's very good at doing layer 2 networking. We don't want to throw that away. Um, but if we want to do layer 3 service chaining, whatever somebody comes up with tomorrow, and a room full of network engineers, I'm sure somebody will come up with something new tomorrow, um, then we can implement an API that suits that better. Um, and you can use backends simultaneously. We're not saying, oh, you can only use Neutron for this virtual machine or only use Neutron on this entire cloud. We're saying you can choose, right? I can make a virtual machine with five ports. I can give each port to a different backend. That works just fine, no argument. Um, so the benefit should be across the board. Neutron should see that the API remains simple and actually even perhaps becomes a little simpler and more robust and more um, set in its ways, if you like. It's very much more definite what you're doing when you use the Neutron API, robust. Uh, for network geeks, you get to experiment, right? We all get to play with new different protocols, with new different ways of, of making an API. And we don't have to sell an unpleasant change to the Neutron team. I mean, by unpleasant, I mean it doesn't fit in with what they're trying to do. And for users, and this is very important, um, speaking as an NFE kind of guy, the thing that I run into here is that what I want to do for NFE is not actually terribly useful in some cases to what cloud users actually want. Maybe it will be, maybe it won't. But yet it puts complexity into Neutron. So they take on all of the risk of, um, uh, of the complexity of the new possible bugs that I've introduced when they use the Neutron code that has the feature that they don't want and they never use. And so it's quite important here that if I have multiple different backends, then I can just not, not install one, not turn it on. And everybody else can use what exists in Neutron because that's all they need to use. Um, and there are a few other possibilities, right? Um, it turns out that if you make that interface nice and tight and tiny, then you can basically plug in things other than virtual machines. I could go all the way and plug in containers, and we could talk about courier if you wanted to. But I can actually plug in things like tunnels or MPLS VPNs in a different way, the way that they're done by um, the current stuff in that's being worked on in the Neutron uh, community today, uh, where MPLS VPNs drop traffic onto a network. I can make all of these things work, and they're independent components that don't actually have to form a part of the same back end. They can just plug in like any other um, networking component plugs in. Um, and similarly, firewalls, 
NAT appliances, load balancers. I don't have to integrate them to Neutron or any other back end. I can just make them a thing that attaches. So it gives me quite a lot of flexibility over and above what I would have had with a stock Neutron um, setup. Um, and so only a few likely pitfalls that I've mentioned. I'm sure there are a few more that we'll discover. Um, we're working on this at the moment. We have some basic code and we're trying to develop it. One question is access control. So um, as it turns out, if you look at this code, a chunk of the access control is in Nova and a chunk is in Neutron. Um, so there's that part of the problem. Um, but the other part of the problem is if I'm using front end X and back end Y, do I need to actually decide who's allowed to do what based on a combination of the front end and the back end and the port that I'm talking about? Or is it something that just the back end gets to determine? You could argue the same actually about quotas. Quotas are another thing here that, that are... Um, uh, an open question about where you would prefer to implement them. Um, and as I say, at the moment, Nova has strong opinions, at least on uh, access control. Neutron has strong opinions on quotas, as it happens. Uh, these things are stuff that we would have to resolve if we went down this path any further. Um, addressing, IP addressing specifically, you could argue that not every, um, every port in the world needs an address, and that is indeed true today. You don't have to give a port an address. Um, so in certain circumstances, addressing may not be at all relevant. But where it is relevant, then Nova really expects there to be an address on a port so that it can feed it into the virtual machine as it starts up. So the virtual machine knows what's going on and what IP address it begins with. Um, and uh, if we're going to do that, then it may be that that has to be an additional part of the port interface between the front end and the back end. Just uh, uh, um, one of those things we'll have to resolve as the interface as we write down what that minimal interface will be. And so that's a basic primer on Neutron. And uh, feel free to come and find me if you've got any questions. Um, hopefully that helps. <laughs>